We're here at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco, and I'm joined in the studio this afternoon with Robert Clark from Paul Matrix. Uh, Bob, good to see you. Nice to see you as well, Dave. So, Bob, I was very interested in learning about your company because it seems to me like you've got a really leading-edge delivery mechanism here in one of your products um, around inhaled uh, products that go into the lungs. Can you talk to us about this uh, delivery mechanism? Sure. So we are developing uh, pulmonary therapeutics based on a novel engineered particulate that we developed at our own labs we call iSPURS, which allows patients to more efficiently and flow rate independently deliver drugs into their own lungs via their own inhalation capability. We're applying that technology to a variety of programs, uh, including a lead program in cystic fibrosis, which is an inhaled antifungal to treat fungal infections in those patients, as well as an antifibrotic in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and a bronchodilator for COPD. So Bob, I understand that um, in your product, it's the dosage might be less, the eff efficacy isn't sacrificed. How does that work? Based on the delivery efficiency capabilities of the platform, I'll give an example. Uh, a very prominent drug that's out there called Advair is a lactose blended dry powder. So lactose blends are a traditional approach to delivering drugs into the lungs where you have the drug adhered to the surface of a lactose carrier. The relative efficiency of those powders is about 20 to 25 percent, meaning that's the limitation of how much drug you might get into the lung. In contrast, our, our iSPURS platform allows us to deliver 65 to 70 percent of the drug per inhalation. So what that then translates to is we can deliver a lower dose yet get the same benefit to the patient. So Bob, what does a typical patient that would be a candidate for this therapy look like? Yeah, your typical patient that would really uh, benefit from our platform technology is in your typical compromised lung function populations, COPD, asthma, cystic fibrosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The point is our platform technology being flow rate independent means that the patient will always reproducibly get their dose because even at their relatively compromised lung function, they'll still be able to uh, conveniently aerosolize the drug from our iSPURS platform, whereas that does not happen with traditional technologies. So is the medication, is it, is it pushed into the lung or is it pulled into the lung? It's pulled in. So it's the patient's own inspiratory flow capacity or actually just their tidal breathing that allows them to deliver the lung into their airways. Uh, if you think about the way you're breathing right now or the way I'm breathing, if you were to take a sustained breath like that, so just continue to inhale at the same rate you are right now for five seconds, you would very effectively get your dose with our platform. And so, uh, what does the device itself look like? Is it compact, small, is it large? I know some of the inhale, inhaled products, uh, you see device sizes kind of all over the board. What does your device look like? The device we're using is about the size of a Tic Tac container. Uh, and so it's probably about two inches high, uh, maybe two and a half, uh, and it's an inch and a half wide. It's very simple to use. It's a very limited number of parts. There's a cap and then the device itself is, all uh, bound together. Uh, a capsule goes inside and the capsule is punctured and the patient inhales uh, the, on the device and what you'll hear is the capsule spinning uh, and that capsule spinning gives an auditory cue to the patient that they're getting dosed. Um, but because our powders fly so efficiently, again, the relatively low inspiratory flow that is needed uh, will allow the powders to get airborne and the patient get their dose. So Bob, is the product on the market coming to market? Where do we stand with that? Yeah, we're, we're in development. So uh, the device we're using is actually similar to marketed products that are already out there, but we're not about the device. The device we're using, we actually get from a commercial supplier. Um, we're all about the powders that go into this device and we're in clinical testing with those right now. Our most advanced program is phase 2A in COPD. So we've been into COPD patients and we've effectively shown exactly what we already spoke about, which is we can deliver over 80% less of the drug yet get the same benefit in the patient's pulmonary function or their, their experience of how their airways feel open after getting the drug. Uh, our lead CF asset is headed, we hope, to the clinic uh, in the second half of this year. We're in the midst of completing non-clinical safety testing right now. And our idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis candidate is earlier stage. That's a preclinical stage asset. So Bob, I know the FDA is working hard to get products to market to benefit patients. And in many cases, they're fast tracking uh, some of these products. Are you able to take advantage of some of the fast track programs that the FDA has underway? We hope we will. So we have not yet filed an IND, so we haven't met with the FDA. But because we're working in the orphan disease space, we are seeking orphan drug designation 
right now for our CF program, and we expect to do the same for IPF. We anticipate because of the 505B2 development path that we can use because the drugs we're using are actually already approved. We're making better versions in our platform technology that that will build additional efficiencies into the development path. Well, Bob, I admire the work that you're doing in helping patients live better lives. Uh, I wish you all the best, and thanks for stopping by. Dave, thank you very much for the time, and I appreciate the questions.